Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines, and today I'm going to show you how to make a hand coloured lino cut print. The first step in this process is to come up with a basic design, then to trace the outlines onto a piece of translucent paper. I'm making some wine labels today for a rosé that we've made, and my design inspiration came from the album cover for Get Happy by Elvis Costello. I'd originally imagined something quite complex, but managed to distill the idea down to something really simple, which is always my end goal for this type of project. The reason that I'm tracing the design to transfer it rather than drawing it straight onto my lino is that the image contains text and I need to write everything backwards so that it will print in the right direction. Now you might notice some light fluctuation in this video. I've done my best to fix it up, but would really love to buy a proper lighting setup so that I can make these videos as high a quality as possible. I have a Patreon, and I have a goal on my Patreon to invest in lighting and an overhead rig when I reach a certain amount of income. So if you'd like to support me, I'd love you to head over there and become a patron. Back to the artwork. I'm making the block for this print from a piece of grey lino, and it's a little bigger than I need. The easiest way to cut this type of lino down to size is to flip it over, mark where you want to make the cuts, and then lightly cut through the woven material on the back. It's safer and easier to make five or so light passes with a sharp utility knife and steel ruler, rather than exerting a lot of pressure to try and cut as deep into the lino as possible in one pass. You don't need to cut all the way through the lino. When you get through the woven backing, you can pick up the block and snap it easily in half along that cut line. My piece of lino was originally from a big roll and it had a little bit of a bow to it. So to flatten that out and make it a bit easier to work with, I've put a piece of cloth over the top and ironed it down. This isn't something that you need to do, but it can be a useful trick to pull out if it's necessary. Also, when the weather's colder, heating up your lino like this can make it easier to carve. I'm using a sheet of carbon paper to transfer my line work onto the block, but there are multiple ways that you can do this. If you don't have any carbon paper, you can make your own substitute by colouring one side of a piece of printer paper with pastel or chalk. And another option is to ink up one side of the paper with an oil-based printmaking ink and do a trace monotype onto your lino, which you can see me do in my video about pour play and mono printing. If you don't have text in your image, you can always just draw straight onto the block, as mirroring the image won't be as much of an issue. I put my carbon paper face down onto the lino, then flipped my traced image over onto the reverse side and traced over that again with a hard ballpoint pen. The carbon from the areas that I press down on with the pen will transfer onto the surface of the lino. When you've finished transferring your image, it's time to carve your piece of lino. Some people like to blacken their lino with Indian ink so that it's easy to see what's been carved away. And I've always liked this idea in theory, but it doesn't work particularly well with the carbon paper transfer method that I like to use. It's definitely a good option to have if you need the extra visibility or if you're making a very detailed carving. If you decide to go with the carbon paper method of image transfer that I've shown, it can be a good idea to make markings or notes on your lino showing which areas you want to carve away, so that you don't accidentally cut away something that you didn't intend to. I'll be carving away the inside of the glasses and then all the area around the text. 
I've included a border around the edge as a cutting guide for later on when I trim the prints down to size. The purple mat that you can see underneath my block is an old piece of rubber yoga mat. I find this works really, really well as a non-slip surface for my lino. You can buy or make special lino cutting jigs that will keep your block secure while you're carving, but I personally prefer using a non-slip mat like this, as it's easy to find, it's cheap, it's portable, it's adaptable to multiple block sizes, and I can move my lino or wood around really easily so that I'm always carving away from my hand. The number one rule for lino on wood carving is to always carve away from yourself, keeping your opposite hand behind the blade. It's very easy to slip with a carving tool and if the tool can cut the lino, it can also cut your hand. It's best to work methodically, doing as many strokes in the same direction as you can before turning the block. I try really hard to think of any text as just shapes at this point of the process, as trying to form the letters in the same way that you would if you were writing makes things really difficult. I outline everything with a V-shaped cutter, and then I use that same cutter to clear away the small areas, and then come back with a U-shaped cutter to clear away the larger areas. The brand of tools I'm using is EC Lions, and these are really great because they're quite ergonomic and I can sharpen them easily before I use them, but any brand of carving tool will do the job. This video isn't sponsored, but I highly recommend buying your tools and materials from your local art shop rather than from a big generic retailer. I know that that's not possible for everyone, but staff at art shops will be able to answer any questions that you might have and provide much more information than a store that doesn't specialise in art. I used to work at Neil Wallace Printmaking Supplies in Australia before I moved overseas, and that's where I bought all the supplies and tools that I'm using in this video. As someone who worked in an art store, I can guarantee if you think your questions about art supplies are too stupid to ask, they're definitely not. I was always happy to answer anything, and if I didn't know the answer, I'd research it. If it's not possible to get to an art supply shop in person, most stores have online shops and will be happy to answer your questions by email or phone. I've listed all my materials and tools in the description, and I'm happy to answer any questions about them in the comments. And I've also listed some affiliate links that I have with a few good international art supply stores. And if you buy anything from those links, I get a small commission. But please support your local art store if you can.
I'm using an oil-based ink for this print, and the ink that I'm using is actually a lithographic ink. There are a lot of inks specific to relief printing available, but most litho inks are also fine to use for relief printing, and I really like the consistency and the density of this particular black. Try and only take out as much ink as you think you'll need, and err on the side of taking out less than you'll need. You can always get more out later if you need it. Printmaking ink is pretty expensive, and you can't really put it back in the tin or tube if you don't use it all. I did about 30 of these small prints, and the amount of ink that I took out turned out to be the perfect amount. I take my ink out of the tin with a paint scraper and I keep a small amount of it in one corner of my slab and I roll out my working ink just next to it. You can add to the working ink gradually as you print when you notice that it's getting a bit thin. It can be hard to see visually if you're running out of ink, but the sound that the roller makes as you ink it up will change quite a lot and that can be a good indicator that you need to add more ink to your rollout. If you have too much ink on the roller, you run the risk of fine details filling in on your block and not printing properly. My general rule for inking up the plate is to do eight rolls on the ink, then eight rolls on the block, and do that two or three times for each print. The first print that you do will pretty much always be terrible, so don't worry, as you won't have built up enough ink on the block yet. First up, I'm going to show you how to print with a Baron. Baron is a traditional Japanese printmaking tool. The one that I'm using here is made by Speedball Art, and it's really comfortable to use with a good clearance for your hand between the handle and the base. This one has a spongy soft surface with a Teflon coating and I feel like it's better for more delicate and fine prints. Because the surface is soft and springy, it's not really great for printing dense solid areas of colour. To use the Baron, you put your paper down and you apply as much pressure as you can while rubbing evenly across the surface of the print. Barons work best with lightweight papers. As I predicted earlier, my first print was pretty garbage, but I got a decent transfer of ink with the second print. Speedball make a second version of this Baron that has a hard plastic surface if you want a tool that's better for printing solid colours. There are also very cheap, decent Japanese Barons that you can buy that are made from a braided coil covered with a bamboo or banana leaf. They make a good print, but they can be hard on your knuckles if you're making a large edition. I've also had really good results from an inexpensive black plastic Baron where the surface was covered with lots of tiny little raised dots. Again, the Black Plastic Baron worked well for large solid areas of ink, but there wasn't a lot of clearance for your hands, so doing a lot of prints at one time was a bit uncomfortable. I generally print my relief prints with an etching press, but even so, I still like to have a Baron because they're useful for prints of unusual sizes and shapes, and they're also really portable if you want to print when you're away from your studio and don't have access to any other equipment. Good practice after your first couple of prints to have a good look at the image and your block to see if there are any areas picking up excess ink that you might need to tidy up. I found a few little stray lines and some areas inside the glasses where I wanted to cut away some of the excess lino before finishing my edition.
If you don't have a barren but you still want to make a really good quality print, another option is to use the back of a spoon. This process is the same as using a barren, but there's not as much surface area on the spoon so it might take a little bit longer. I've tried this with both wooden and metal spoons and I've found that I get better results with the metal spoon. Try them both though as you might find you prefer one over the other. This is probably the easiest, most economical, accessible option for making prints. Moving from the cheapest way to the most expensive, least accessible option, this is my etching press. I bought this from Neil Wallace Printmaking Supplies many years ago, and I print almost all my lino on wood using this press. It's much faster and less strenuous, and it gives the best, most even result. Very few people are going to have a printing press in their house, and not everyone has access to a community print studio. But if you do, this is a great option. To print liner wall wood, you need to put some runners that are the same height as your block on either side of the press so that the roller doesn't drop and slip when you move past the edge of your block. I set my press so that it hits the top of the block and then I tighten the pressure just a fraction more. You can run the block through the press just one way, but my room here is small so I have to run it through twice to be able to get the print out. Nobody wants to hear this, but the most important part of printmaking is knowing how to clean up after yourself. I clean the ink off my plate first with a rag and some citrus-based solvent, and I'm using Sennelier's Green for Oil Paintbrush Cleaner. I've found it to be fantastic for cleaning up printmaking ink as well as paint. It's a much better and safer alternative than using regular solvents like turpentine, especially when you can't find one of your cleaning gloves. After I've cleaned the plate, I use a small scraper blade to get as much of the ink off my slab as I can. This ink slab is an off-cut piece of Perspex plastic from a framer, and you can use any thicker piece of glass or even an old picture frame. I wipe off the excess ink onto a scrap piece of paper. To clean the roller, I roll as much of the ink off it as I can and I clear that off the slab with the blade. Then I finish cleaning the roller with my rag and citrus solvent. Make sure you clean any ink off the sides of the roller and the frame and the handle as well. It's good to give the surface of the roller one final wipe with a clean cloth or a paper towel.
Once all that is done, you can use your rag and your solvent to wipe your slab clean. I like to leave oil based prints to dry at least overnight before hand colouring them. You'll need to spread them out in a single layer somewhere safe to dry. You can use whatever type of colour you want on the prints, including watercolour or pencil. Because my labels will be stuck onto wine bottles that need to be refrigerated, I'm using Sennelier Encre Drawing Ink. Watercolour reactivates when it gets wet, but the inks that I'm using have a shellac base and they're much more water resistant. Here I'm experimenting on some spare prints with a bunch of different colours just to see what combination we like the best. The brush that I'm using is a Japanese goat hair brush with a bamboo handle. These are generally really inexpensive and they work really well for ink painting. My paper is Zirkel 120 GSM printmaking paper which was chosen because it's lightweight and it was scrap left over from an old project. I always like to keep my offcuts to reuse for small projects like this. I think that's I probably like the green as well. That's probably right. I think maybe this make the the surf blanc in more of a green because it's got that grassy cool. sort of connotation. So we go with this one for, for this. Yeah, I think so. And I liked the I liked the little bit of blue up in there. But it's also kind of nice without it. In that one, you mean? Oops, sorry. In, that's fine. That's oh, fine. I see. Sorry, blue in there. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I'm happy. I like that one too because it's nice and simple. Yeah. But if you prefer that, that's fine. I think. I'm leaning towards that. I'm leaning towards that because that's quicker. It's very, um, it's basic. Sorbass. Yeah, it's nice and simple. Cool, we'll go with this one then. Once we'd chosen which colour combination we liked the best, I could paint them all in large batches, one colour at a time to avoid needing to excessively clean my brush. This also keeps the addition as consistent as possible, as you can see and compare the prints together. When they were done, I left them overnight in a single layer to dry. This ink does dry much quicker than that, but I always opt for a longer drying time when I can, just to be sure. Thank you. 
I originally intended to trim these labels flush to the black line, but when we were choosing the colours, we both decided that we really liked the white line that I'd cut as a guide, so I trimmed the labels a little larger to include this. I cut the labels down to size in batches of five using a cutting mat, a sharp utility knife and a metal ruler. When you cut the stacks of paper like this, use multiple light passes with the knife instead of trying to cut through the lot at once as it's safer and easier. I do have a guillotine on my wish list, which would make this process even simpler again. So hit up that Patreon if you like my videos and you'll help me make my guillotine dreams come true. For the finishing touches, I stick the labels onto our wine bottles with the glue stick. They stick well enough to stay on the bottles when they should, and they're still very easy to clean off the bottles when we're ready to make the next batch. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please like, subscribe and comment. Questions and suggestions are always welcome. If you can financially support this channel, please head over to my Patreon. Even the smallest contribution helps out immensely. Thanks for watching. See you soon with more tutorials and drawing videos. Cheers.